being able to run machine learning models locally is becoming more and more important these days. Especially if you don't want to pay for cloud services for the rest of your life. Unplug, all right? But there's a lot of options out there, different models and different hardware. And today I've got a wide range of consumer hardware. Here I've got an Intel NUC style box. It's got a Core Ultra 5 Series 1, Series 2 just landed. So I don't have all the hardware here and it's not available in these little NUCs yet. When it is, I'll make sure to make a video about it. I also have an M2 Pro Mac Mini here and I've got another mini PC, which is a Minus 4 mini PC. This one has Oculink attached to an RTX 4090. So it's not getting the full PCIe bandwidth, but it is running through Oculink, which is giving us up to 63 gigabits per second speed here. I made separate videos about the NUC, upgrading that to 96 gigabytes of RAM, which is what it has in it, and a separate video on this RTX 4090 setup. Even though this is a wide range, it doesn't cover all the different options out there, especially in the Mac world, where you can get a desktop Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra chip in it that can run pretty large models because that's unified memory there. On the RTX 4090, we only have a limit of 24 gigs of RAM. Otherwise, you're going to have to share with the CPU and system RAM, which is going to slow things down. So to take full advantage of this, you have to run smaller size models. Keep that in mind because the smaller the model, the faster it is, but also quality takes a hit. To get chat GPT-like results, well, you won't be able to do that at home. So today I'm doing a 7 billion parameter model so they can all fit on all these. And we're gonna see who is the fastest. But being the fastest doesn't mean you've won. It really depends what you're doing. You can also be efficient. So I've come up with a formula to represent efficiency and we're gonna take a look at that at the end. Now, as far as speed goes, people have done tests on chat GPT and GPT 4.0 ranges somewhere in between 55 to 75 tokens per second, just to give you an idea. Now you get to see what I see. And I'm seeing Seeing that right now, these two machines are not eating any power at all. They're at zero. But this contraption, even though everything is off, is using 2.3 watts just sitting there. Let's power things on and see how things look at idle. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. We jumped to 92 watts, 104 watts just sitting there. So that machine is starting up. There's the Mac coming online. And we're seeing that we've got 6.8 watts, 18 watts, 21 watts. Okay, it's going up and it started already. Mini PC, let's go. Okay, we've got 32, 33 watts. This one calmed down quite a bit. All right, we're running on all three of these. Now, when the RTX board is not being used, we are down to 62 watts. The Mac Mini is at 15 watts, and the GMK Tech Intel machine is at 17 watts. So they've done a pretty good job. And this is just Series 1. Series 2, Lunar Lake, is going to be much more efficient than that. All right, I got Olama running here. By the way, I have a full tutorial on how to set that up, running locally. Write a 100-word story. Boom. It's pretty fast. The fans didn't even spin up. Is that crazy or what? Let's do a thousand words. I just want those fans to spin up to make sure. There we go. There we go. Yes, fans started to spin up. Power is going up. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, now let's do the Mac Mini. Write a 1,000 word story. That's not bad, actually. <laughs> It's going pretty fast too. And we are drawing about 57, 58 watts. These are both running Llama 3.1, 7 billion parameter model. Now with the Intel machine, it's a little bit tricky. You can run Olama on the CPU, or you can use the IPEX LLM Intel library to run it on the GPU, which is the Intel Arc integrated GPU. And I made a setup video for that as well. I'm not gonna go over that, but I'll link it down below if you're curious. Now, if you just run Olama 3.1 on the Intel machine, and by the way, Olama is running on the system, this should use the CPU. Right on 1000 word story. Boom. Okay, so it's going. It's by far not even close to what the other ones are doing speed wise. But you can tell, you know, it's running on the CPU. So what do you expect? This thing is being loud. It's heating up. To get this running on the GPU, we're going to switch off Olama running system wide and run it from a special folder that you set up with IPEX LLM. The reason we're doing that is because Olama out of the box doesn't support Intel's Arc GPU, like it supports M1 Max or Apple Silicon Max and NVIDIA RTX GPUs. I've just realized I made a mistake. Um, 
So I'm, I'm sitting here and wondering, this is crazy. The Intel machine is using 13 watts and the Mac mini is using 15 watts. How can that be? And then I realized, wait a minute, this display right here is powered via USB-C. Yeah, that was kind of dumb. I'm gonna switch it out. The outlet is just for the Mac mini now and it's using only 3.5 watts. So now when I run that same query, there it goes. We're using 45 watts total. All right, we're gonna make this a race. And this is Schwarzenegger 2.0. For those that have never seen this guy before, a little contraption I built to allow me to push this one button right here and have it push all the keys at the same time. Now we're gonna watch the wattage as I do this. Prompt is write a 1000 word story and go. <laughs> They're all going. Well, I think the RTX 4090 is gonna win this one by far. However, the Mac mini is not too far behind. And of course, we're running on the CPU on that K9, so that's gonna take a while. This one's done. We're up to 47 watts over here. I didn't even catch how far we got in wattage on the RTX board, on the RTX system. But 66 watts on that K9. 46 watts on the Mac mini and it's done. It's faster and uses less wattage than the Intel Core Ultra 5 machine. All right, come on now, finish up. Not much of a race, huh? But we knew this was gonna happen. We knew the fastest machine was gonna be the board with the Nvidia card. It's done, the Intel machine is done. See, even though the RTX machine is so fast, the biggest bottleneck there is transferring the model from system RAM to VRAM, it has to copy it. Once the model is inside, the VRAM, it's insanely fast. We're talking about a terabyte per second bandwidth in memory there, but it's that initial copy that's pretty slow. Now what's going on with this Intel machine? Let me switch over to the IPEX library to see if we get any better speed there. And then we're gonna do some actual benchmarks. Now I've got Olama running under the GPU on that Intel machine. Let's see if we can get that story written a little bit faster. Not sure if it will be. And also keep an eye on the wattage here because is the LLM running on the GPU gonna take up less wattage or more? Let's see. Boom. Now that I'm paying attention to it, 320 watts on that RTX system, 45 watts on the Mac mini and 49 watts on the Intel. RTX machine is done. It's done on the Mac mini. I wonder what this story is about. This one's talking about Emma Mayfield. That one's talking about Willow Creek. And this one's talking about Emily. This AI stuff is weird, man. Now, these experiments are not exactly 100%. Oh, that's done. Intel machine is done. Of course, these experiments are not 100% apples to apples, right? Because every time you generate something, it's non-deterministic. So if we do multiple runs, it should be about the same. You get an idea. Now that we've got the GPU, it seems like it's using less wattage. It's using, it seems like it may be a little bit faster. I don't know, we'll have to do the calculation at the end there. But now that the Intel box is at its best, we're gonna run the benchmark. And it's the LLM benchmark that's open source. You can find it on GitHub if you wanna check it out too is the llm benchmark even going to be able to run with those larger models on those two machines i do have the 96 gigs on the intel machine now so that should be fine but i do wonder what's going to happen on the rtx machine and the mac mini which both have less ram to run the benchmark i just go llm benchmark run and this is gonna go through all the different benchmarks it has. It has 5.3, Quen 2, Gemma 2, Mistral, Llama 3.1, Lava 7 billion, and Lava 13 billion. So it goes through them one at a time, doing some prompting, and then gives a result in tokens per second for each model. A few inches later, just a quick reminder that Olama is actually targeted for Apple Silicon and you can see that it's fully utilizing the GPU there. There's a GPU history chart and it's maxing out that GPU, taking full advantage of it. A little longer than a few minutes later. Now I just wanted to give you a quick update here. The RTX machine has been done for a while. The Mac mini has been done for a while, but we're still only on the third model and we're not done with that yet on the Intel machine. Okay. Now that you know those, let's have a peek at the Mac mini results. On Mistral, we got 35. On the 7 billion parameter and the 8 billion parameter models, we're going from 35, 32 to 50 tokens per second. 9 billion parameter, slightly more. We're at 25 there. And the 13 billion parameter model is at 20. Now, 
Let's switch gears to the RTX machine. Yeah, that's a big difference there. Uh, so in the seven and eight billion parameter models, we're ranging from 130 to 200 tokens per second. And the nine and 13 billion parameter models are around 90. That is the area of chat GPT speed, but locally. I'm gonna run this again, this time with measure command so that we can see how long this process takes. Measure command is on Windows and on a Mac, we're gonna use the time command. All right, here we go. It's getting hot in here. I'm gonna open up that door. So who won? Well, it's not crystal clear. I know who didn't win. And this is a very personal choice. I don't think that Intel machine actually won. However, between the RTX 4090 and the M2 Pro, we have to consider a few things. Let's talk about the total energy consumption during the run. By the way, the numbers I'm using are 97 seconds for the Intel machine, 47 seconds for the M2 Pro, and 12 seconds for the 4090. On average, 50 watts used by the Intel machine, 48 watts used by the M2 Pro and 320 watts used by the RTX 4090. But the time to first token was only one second on the Intel machine and the M2 Pro, but it was two seconds on the 4090. That's the thing I was talking about where the model has to get copied to VRAM before the VRAM can act on it. This is an 8 billion parameter model. If the model was larger, it would take that much longer to get going with it. Whereas on the M2 Pro, for example, the memory is already available. We can take a look at total energy consumption. Even though the RTX 4090 used an average of 320 watts while it was processing, it was actually the Intel machine that used overall more energy over the span of the generation than the 4090. And of course, the M2 Pro used the least amount. You can also consider the performance per watt metric if you care about that sort of thing. This is sort of an arbitrary metric, but it does show that the M2 Pro has the best performance per watt. But what about real stuff? Things that people actually care about, things that affect us. A couple things to look at here. What are you using it for? Are you using it to get fast, accurate responses? Like if you're in a situation where you're coding and you want an LLM to be your coding assistant, you want instant, almost instant responses, as fast as possible at least. In that case, the Intel and the Mac are actually winners here because they're giving you faster response times. Whereas on the RTX machine, you have to wait for a while. And if you're sending really short queries to the LLM, then that initial cost is gonna be super noticeable and the speed you're gonna get from the RTX machine is not gonna matter that much because you're not generating a thousand lines of text. So it's not gonna matter if it takes 0.2 seconds or 0.4 seconds to generate a few tokens. But in chat applications where you wanna generate a block of code, then that would matter because you want it to be generated faster. What other things matter to us? Well, there's also heat and there's also cost. Heat is pretty obvious. I mean, if you're in a small room and you're gonna be running the M2 Pro, you're not even gonna notice it. The Intel machine surprisingly blows a lot of hot air out of the sides. It's not super hot. It's not like it used to be with a core i7s or i9s, but it is there. Noise level is another thing. Mac mini makes zero noise. This thing is pretty loud. And of course, the RTX 4090 is the loudest and makes the most heat. So if you're in a small office, in a small room, you might uh, end up cooking yourself over a long period of time. Now, if you're in a hot climate, this also plays uh, into how much cooling you need to do for your location, for your office. You're going to need to pay more for running the air conditioner. Or if you live in the North Pole, then actually that's good because then you can save some money by running the RTX 4090. It'll heat your room. So heating aside, not something I can really measure, but what we can estimate a little bit closer is operational costs and the total cost of ownership. The uh, little knuck boxes like the Intel machine here range anywhere from three to $400 uh, up to $900. I think this particular model I have here is around $500 to $600. Mac mini start at 500 bucks, but this particular model with the M2 Pro chip, and that does matter, was a thousand dollars. And if you scale that up, if you want to go even faster, you can go to the Mac Studios, which now start, I believe, at two thousand dollars for the Max chips and four thousand dollars for the Ultra chips. But at that point, you're getting even faster performance and pretty much same thermal responses. But the M2 Pro is actually a pretty decent deal here. Now, to have this setup here, you have a mini PC, which is around five to six hundred dollars again, you have an Oculus 
Link dock here, which is 100 bucks. The RTX card is $1,800, and this power supply is around $200. This is actually cheaper than building out an entire desktop, but you're also not getting the full speed or capacity of an RTX 4090. We hit 320 watts, but the 4090 can do a lot more. If you were to have it in a desktop with a PCIe connection, then it will be even faster and consume more power too. So this being one of the top consumer cards, there's still room for improvement from what I've showed you if you care about only performance. So the pricing of the hardware that I compared, this being the cheapest, this being in the middle, and this being the most expensive. We can also calculate how much this is going to cost you annually. In the United States, the average price of electricity for kilowatt hour is about 16 cents. In Hawaii, it's like 40 something cents. And in Louisiana, it's the cheapest at 11 cents. So if you run about 200 of these calculations per day, which is not unheard of, especially if you're using it as an LLM for a coding assistant, you might even go over that, then these are your daily costs associated with running each one of these machines, which also takes into account that you're running these machines at idle most of the day. And this is your annual cost in the United States. But United States is not very expensive country on average. Uh, let's take a look at Denmark and Germany, who are the most expensive countries, apparently. You might not want to get an RTX 4090 for this kind of thing. As you can see, in about a year or so, you're going to be paying quite a lot for your electricity bill just for running this thing. So out of the systems I tested, the Apple Silicon version is by far the most cost effective. And this is operational cost and initial cost in both the United States and Europe. But if you don't care about that and you want the absolute highest performance doing long generation, then the RTX 4090, of course, beats all the other ones hands down. I'm curious about the next generation of the Intel machines. Let me know in the comments if you do want to see something like that once we get those machines in. And if you enjoyed this style of video, let me know also. I appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up. If you missed my video initially setting up the RTX system that I have here with the power supply and the dock and everything, then you can watch it right over here. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one.